Hello, in this tutorial we're going to begin looking at expressions. And expressions take the attributes of an object and allow you to uh, put different functions to control them. Uh, it takes each one of these attributes such as uh, that are keyable and you can drive the translate with the rotate or by time or different things like that and they're 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 very useful an expression is just a statement that uh, you uh, create it and then it's it'll automatically process with the timeline as the timelines run so let's take a look at the expression editor which will be found in windows uh, rendering editors I'm sorry animation editor expression editor and you'll see this window and the first thing you'll you'll do is uh, you'll see your object name which let's go ahead and give our object a different name we'll call this uh, balloon with a capital B and uh, notice it changed the name in here and I want to give this expression name this is going to I want to call this the uh, inflate and rise uh, expression and to create an expression you first have to select which attribute you're going to be animating and once you select one attribute you can put other commands on that one but you have to kind of attach it to a single attribute and since we're going to make it rise we're going to go to the translate X and you see how to reference that specific attribute in your little code down here so uh, I can grab this and I can middle mouse drag uh, and it says my translate Y is equal let's say this is equal to my I'll just do a little test here let's say to my translate Z okay so if I hit create, it says uh, it's, everything seems to be okay. Um, and if we play it, nothing really happens. But what happens if we animate our translate Z? So I'm going to set a keyframe here and go to 100. And in my translate Z, that's not Z, my translate Z. Uh, I set a keyframe there and notice with that so I pulled only in one direction but as I pull this is kind of locked to my translate Z which is kind of cool that's what an expression does it allows you to let, let uh, functions or other attributes control uh, other attributes So, uh, but we're not going to do that, but I just want to show that for demonstration. So I'm going to double click here and delete. And I'm just going to take that back to zero. And that should take my Y back to zero. And let's edit that expression to say we want you to uh, rise with time. So time is going to start with zero. That's good. And as time increases, so will the Y position. That sounds good. So let's try that. And at, when we're at frame 10, uh, that's not 110 units. We're actually, uh, a second is 24 frames by default. So at 24 frames, that should be about one unit. 48 frames is two units. So as we play this, it rises up. So the time is uh, an expression that is determining the animation of the Y translate. So in this tutorial, I'm just I took something directly out of the Maya help. It is not original to me at all, but I thought it was a very good exercise. But they have the uh, they this little animation where this balloon inflates and then rises out of the scene, which I thought was pretty cool because it's animated completely with the expression. So let's let's do that. Uh, so we know how to make the the balloon rise with time. Uh, 
and suppose we wanted the uh, balloon to inflate. So to inflate the balloon, um, I would want to uh, scale in in uh, Y here, but I want to scale kind of from the bottom and not the top. So I'm going to take my pivot point, hit the home key, and then I'm going to hit V and I'm going to lock it to the bottom here. And now when I scale, it's going to scale from the bottom. All right. Um, All right, I have lost. Now there is, it's in my translate Y. Um, so I'm going to edit that and then start again. And uh, I want it to inflate with time. So let's see. What, I'm, I copy that, Command C, Command V, and uh, it's on a Mac on Windows. That might be Control C and Control V. But um, instead of translate, I'm going to change this to scale. So it's going to start flat. And let's see if that works. Yeah, it's like a little pancake down there. And then as time goes on, it's going to inflate. And it keeps inflating. All right. All right, so in the Maya help, the project says, well, what if you could do, what if you could control the expression where it the inflation is only going to happen for a specific amount of time then stop and then the translator the balloon rising would happen at a certain amount of time and then stop and the way you would do that is with an if statement so we'd say if uh, our time is less than two seconds or less than 48 frames uh, then you're going to do something Okay, and that do something is going to be our scale. I'm going to paste that up here. And then we could say, well, if it's after two seconds, or if you're else, then we're going to begin to rise. So I'm sure all of you are very familiar with conditional statements. Uh, the syntax here is very simple. You do have to end with a semicolon, and how you access those nodes, it has your object name, period, and then your uh, attribute name. Now, be very aware of what attribute you're writing this under, because I'm writing this here, but if I click this one, notice it's gone. It, it, it's not deleted, but it's under my translate Y. So I've, I've started doing these before and I forgot which attribute I had the expression under and it's kind of lost. You can uh, you can kind of ex select by, if you've given it a name, you can select by expression name. Um, and usually there's some sort of drop down. Um, but do remember which attribute you place your expression under. All right, so let's let's see where we're at here. Now there seems it seems to work all right, but a couple things are happening. As I go back to zero, uh, this translate x didn't go back to zero. See how it's starting from, and now it's at eight. Well, there's nothing that tells it to reset. It runs through it, and wherever it stops that's kind of it so we need to before it starts going up and translate it why we need to go ahead and set our translate why hey before you start rising I want you to be zero before two seconds you're zero and um, the balloon scale why we may have to do the same thing um, well, maybe not let's let's see Okay. Now the other thing we have going on here, let's notice close. There's a there's a jump here. And what's what's causing that is well, our time is moving. 
one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame, up to one second, one second, two frames, four frames, five, up to two frames. Uh, so we're at two seconds when the balloon equals time. So before two seconds, that translate is at zero. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you hit two, you're going to pop up to two units. And it's not rising that time in between. So what we're going to have to do is whatever this number is here, we're going to have to take time and uh, subtract that amount. So it, it starts rising from zero instead of at frame two. And now that should, it starts rising and see how that, that didn't jump off the ground there. All right. Now, for my taste, I think the balloon's a little elongated. Uh, so I'm going to go and change my X to maybe 1.5, 1.5, and my Z to 1.5 to make my balloon a little rounder. That looks a little better. And the last thing I want to do is show you uh, a sign function. Just like time, there's a sign function that um, if you give that sign function a variable that is moving in a linear fashion like time, uh, it will actually oscillate. You've all heard of a sine curve going from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Um, so we can take that oscillating movement and plug that into our rotate and have our balloon kind of wobble as it goes up. So I'm thinking rotate x is kind of I'd like to see it do something like that as it rises. So, I'm gonna, uh, so what would you do? Obviously, we don't want it to rise before the time, so we'd probably take something down here. I'm going to copy this. And we would want the rotate x, and it's going to end it's going to be the sine function time and uh, we need something here that's going to move like time okay and we also want to go ahead and set this in the beginning the rotate x to equal zero or else it's uh, you never know when you start at what angle you're going to be at okay so let's see if that works. What we're looking for is uh, inflates, starts rising. As it rises, it has this little slight back and forth. So I'm going to play that. And I don't really see any, anything. So what we may have to do with this sine times, we may have to give it a multiplier. It may be happening, but it just may be so subtle that it's imperceptible. So let's give it a multiplier of about 10 and see if we can begin to see something going on here. And there we go. There we you start seeing um, the movement and you know if you did a multiplier of 50 you can really see it. It's probably going to get kind of crazy. But uh yeah. But that's that's what I'm looking for for this exercise. I, I just want you to play around with the uh expression editor in here uh the time function, the sine function, and then just be able to access your variables and give them values in a conditional way. So we can say, uh, so go ahead and for this week's exercise, I want you to create uh, three balloons, but I want them to release and blow up at different times, which uh, sounds easier than it is, but uh, you guys are smart. You guys can finish it figured out. So make three balloons and have each one blow up and release from the ground at a different time. 